Question four, the type of question that many people dread. This is what is called a pinwheel question, where we have multiple products coming off of a single starting material. These are at the end of every chapter, so that you can always look at them and get an idea of where they are. Um, get an idea of how this question might look. There'll be a question like this for every functional group in every chapter, and pretty much on every exam that you'll ever see. So you might as well get used to it, regardless of where you take part two. Um, so, in this case, we have a few things to deal with, though. We have regiochemistry, possibly. We have missing reagents for some. We have missing products for others. And we have relative stereochemistry in a couple of cases, specifically A and B, since those are the only ones that have anything to do. So, A, osmium tetroxide. This is a cis dihydroxylation. So, what we get is this. We get new alcohols on the same face of what was the alkene. And we also get the enantiomer. This is not a chiral reaction, but this is relative stereochemistry. That is a syn addition. So, one thing I will point out here to be very careful with. Happened more than a few of you. The methyl group just went abracadabra and disappeared. No. 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 It doesn't go anywhere. It's still there, no matter what reaction I do to this. So, B, bromination. This is a, an anti-addition. So my two bromines are going to end up on opposite sides of what was the alkene. Methyl group is still there. C, it's the only trick question in the test. Lin-Lars is an alkyne reaction. There's no reaction with alkenes. That's the entire point of it. It doesn't react with alkenes. Okay, D, bromine in the less substituted position, that is HBr and peroxides. Hint, hint, that was the previous question. E, a couple different ways to do this, but basically we just need a strong base. We could do it with sodium amide, we could do it with methoxide. It's an E2 reaction. So anything that's E2 usable would work here. So just say methoxide for simplicity. But there are a lot of other options. The point is, it's an E2 reaction. Not the only one, either. Um, we're going to see the same thing for H. So H is exactly the same. This is another E2 reaction. Same conditions. Okay. So, alcohol in the less substituted position. That's hydroboration. So this is BH3THF. Well, first step one. Second step, hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. G, converting an alcohol to a bromine. Secondary alcohol, HBr would work, but you're better off doing something that's an SN2 reaction, so you're better off with something like PBr3. H, we already took care of, that's an E2 reaction. I, we're adding a bromine to the more substituted position, that's just HBr. And that's also how you're going to convert a tertiary alcohol to the bromide is HBr. There are a couple of other ways to do that, but that's the easy one. K, the more substituted alcohol. So you can either do hydration with H3O+, or you can do oxymercuration there. So for K, realistically, I'd say you're looking at mercuric acetate. And water. And then sodium borohydride for the demercuration. L is an E1 elimination. We're eliminating an alcohol. The only way to do that is strong acid. So we're talking about something like sulfuric acid here. To turn that alcohol into a leaving group, and then weak base can take care of the adjacent hydrogen to the elimination. 